How did you end up in St. George, and how old were you at the time? Because, like I said, Jordan's young. Like, when I hear, when I read Jordan's resume, I think it's like a 60-year-old dude, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Halfway there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> sure. Um, so, I uh, graduated high school in a very small town, Elko, Nevada, right between Salt Lake and Reno. Nice. Um, and I pretty much knew uh, throughout high school that I was ready to get out. Got it. Um, I was uh, I had aspirations of playing golf competitive, you know, at a competitive, potentially professional level. Oh, nice! Uh, so after I graduated, I moved down to St. George because there was not as much snow, uh -huh. and I was able to golf kind of year year round. So that's why uh, what took me down there, and uh, after having a little bit more exposure than like high school of how good people are, uh -huh. uh, it's like wow. Uh, <laughs> You may you may be good compared to your buddies, but you're not going to be the next Tiger Woods. Sorry, <laughs> got it. <laughs> so realized I probably needed to get a real job, and um, that's when I transitioned into real estate. I had had um, little touches of yeah. it kind of throughout the years, and I think most people end up being interested in real estate in some capacity. And yeah, uh, the barrier of entry was pretty low. It was 2010, and I was like, well. Uh, what I hear is there's a financial meltdown going on. It didn't really affect me too much. I was uh, just turned 20 years old. And, wow. Um, so decided, hey, I've, I'm going to go ahead and get in now while everyone who's been in the business for 30 years is on, is on their way out and maybe there'll be some room for me. <laughs> right. That's fantastic. What an opportunity. Oh, yeah. It worked out great. <laughs> it's been one heck of a ride, let me tell you. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So now you uh, got your license in St. George. You're a retail real estate agent. Yep. Okay, and then you start flipping, uh, and I, I don't know why I say condos. I remember you saying the word condo once, if I'm not mistaken. Was, was there houses too? Yeah, there were houses and, and condos. Gotcha. I was attracted to condos because they were cheaper. Oh, you know, okay. You could get one of those for like 30 grand. <laughs> That's right. Starting out, it was like 3,300. Let's go for the cheap one. Right, right. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, so now you're in St. George, and you've made the decision that obviously... Uh, you're going to move to Salt Lake. What kind of inspired that decision? Well, um, St. George is, you know, uh, is a much smaller market, mm -hmm. and, and it's more geared toward retirement. Yeah. Um, it's certainly not everybody, but you know, it seems like half the people down there are retired. So just didn't have the energy that I was kind of looking for. Yes. I'm more up at your level, maybe not quite. But <laughs> yes. I, I, like, uh, I like the action. Uh -huh. uh, so to just basically determined that it was probably a little bit too small for me to reach my full potential so I wanted to kind of try my hand at a, a bigger place and I was already licensed in the state of Utah uh, yeah um, the brokerage I was affiliated with had an office up here so it was it was a easy transition nice nice and was that century 21 yeah I joined century 21 just before I moved up here got it got it okay very cool so you get to Salt Lake City, what's your game plan at that point? To keep flipping, to be a retail agent? Obviously, development wasn't in the mindset yet, was it? No, not not at all. Okay. Um, I, 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 had a, I had grown a pretty successful residential real estate business down south, um, and knowing how much effort that was going to take to redo that, I had pretty much committed to moving almost exclusively into the investment side. Got it. Um, with flipping and rentals, I had some, you know, was doing that, but it wasn't my main focus in St. George. Um, and that's what we, you know, because we were ground zero, decided that's what we were, how we were going to grow our business. Awesome, awesome. And I love, I love, I, I listened to a podcast you'd done recently, oh, right? Okay. And I loved how you said it's, it's, I'm a family guy, so I, it, it resonated with me. Your best friend was your brother, yeah. right? And yeah. so when you say the word we, are you referring to Caden? Um, or somebody else. We we uh, could definitely be Caden. He had uh, moved up uh, to Salt Lake and joined me. He went to the University of Utah, so nice. Uh, he came up I don't know three or four months after I did. So that was a huge perk as Got well it. of coming to Salt Lake versus the other places that I could have gone. All oh, right. Um, and a big part of the we as well is it. Real estate's a team sport. Yeah. Um, it is. And there's a lot of people that help me do do what I do, both the individuals on my team and home inspectors and contractors and right um, all, title people. All those all those people go into the success. You know, that yeah. guys like us have. Yes, yes, gotcha. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So now you're flipping, and you've got a portfolio of rentals. Um, most people that 
that flip real estate don't start flipping high-end homes. They work their way up there. So at what point did you decide, hey man, this entry level is not for me? Because you do beautiful work. Just so everybody knows, I've been to multiple Jordan Atkin projects. <laughs> and they're like primo, right? They're, they're the ones that everybody fights to, to buy. Yeah. So how did you decide this entry level is not for me and, and make that jump? You know, it was, it was really twofold. Um, when, when I moved up here, uh, this was a huge market relative to what I, I specialized in the west side of St. George, even when I was down there, Santa Clara, Ivins, and so not even the whole city. Okay. So when I moved up here, you know, there's three million people or something along the Wasatch Front. And right. I, and I know guys who flipped from Pro, uh, Provo to Ogden. Yeah. I was like, I don't know how you could understand all that. Right. So I just kind of drove around the Wasatch Front for the first week or so that I was here and found that I really resonated with kind of the old historic Salt Lake City. Uh, Ninth and Ninth, Harvard, Yale type area. Yeah. I had never, maybe never noticed, but, but never felt like I had had exposure to those tree-lined streets, canopying over, Tudor-style brick homes, just nothing I had ever personally experienced. So right. Those houses have a tendency to need much more work than right. something you know built in 1995 like I was flipping down in St. George, which paint. <laughs> I was a Peyton carpet master. <laughs> Got so, it. Kind of just the, the houses that I personally was, was interested in being involved with. Yes. And then, you know, uh, 2013, I moved up here in 2013, and 13, 14 wasn't nearly as competitive, but it still felt really competitive in that lower price range. Got it. Um, but there were not as many people who were dying uh, to do a you know two hundred thousand dollar rehab on a right. house built in nine, you know eight, eighteen ninety or something like that. Right. So uh, got it. Interesting. Yeah. And and when, I love that they just like two hundred thousand just in the remodeling. Just oh, to be yeah. clear, just, just the remodeling. Yes, yeah. this is not. He's not buying it for two hundred. He buys it and then still dumps two hundred into these beautiful houses. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. What, I mean, they're amazing products. Okay. So. You then go from there to, from residential to commercial, um, you know, now, and that's your main focus, yep. commercial now. Um, can you share a little bit about how you made that jump from residential to commercial? One day you woke up and said, um, done flipping houses, or how did that happen? It, it, was, uh, it was a very profound um, experience. I was actually at the tsunami in South Jordan. I know the exact table. I was sitting there with a business mentor of mine, and I was saying, hey, you know, I feel like I'm having some success doing this, uh -huh. but I know I don't want to have a team, a huge, you know, a huge yeah. team of ten people to run these rehabs. I don't really want to do even higher end remodels. You know, right? These are already high enough, and you know, relative to Utah. Yeah. So how do I like kind of take it to the next level? And his advice was, you need to just do bigger deals. Got it. And I was like, what does this mean? Yeah. Like, how do you do this? How can I go bigger than I already am? Does that mean build more square footage or what? Yeah. Uh, so I just reflected on that for, you know, probably several months and really tried diving into it and ultimately realized that I had bigger deals in my portfolio already and oh. they were multifamily. Got it. So instead of one door per roof, yes. I could get four doors per roof and the transaction size was actually larger. Got it. Um, but it, didn't really have more risk because you know when we started remodeling fourplexes, um, we could keep three units rented. Yes, and then uh, just remodel one, put a new tenant in that one, and go to the next one. Oh, okay. So it actually was a lot. I perceived it as a lot less risky as well than flipping a single family home where it's just basically you're bleed you're bleeding the entire time until right. you get this big payday at the end. Right, right, right. That makes sense because you get an income on three units <coughs> while you're. Yeah. Renovating one, so that uh, is a lot less, like you said, a lot less blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, one, once I, you know, had that epiphany, I yeah. said, "This is the direction I'm going." Uh, we stopped flipping houses immediately, which okay. was again difficult to yeah. shut off that income stream. But I knew uh, I wouldn't be able to really become a true multifamily and commercial investor if I was always going to be flipping houses. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yeah, that is, that that does sound scary to turn off your income to pursue a different income because you don't know the length of time it's going to take before that next income starts coming in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I underestimate it. Let me just tell you. <laughs> I've done that. I've done yeah. that before, too. Uh, you know, it'll be nothing. I'll get, I'll get paid next month. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. no, it took us, you know, eight months or something before we got our first paychecks. So gotcha. It was, it was rough. It was rough. Gotcha, gotcha. OK, 